Hello, it's Phil Thatch, and I'm here in my living room talking to you now about something that happened the last couple of days at my real job. Uh, came to work yesterday morning, and I was hanging out outside before I went inside for our morning meeting, and there was this awesome rhinoceros beetle climbing on the side of the building. And uh, I thought that was really cool. And then I went to the meeting, and the day progressed. And then later in the day, one of my coworkers texted me, said, man, there is a rhinoceros beetle out here that's just begging to be photographed. Well, I didn't want to bother the beetle. I would have loved to have photographed it, but it was climbing up way higher than I could. I don't carry my real cameras to work, but I would have taken a cell phone picture of it if I could have reached it. Well, that was uh, yesterday. Today, my buddy, the same buddy who texted me, came over and said, hey, the rhinoceros beetle fell down and I've got it in this coffee cup. So he brought it to me and it was very, very lethargic. I think it may be coming to the end of its days. It's barely moving around ever so slightly, but I brought it home and I used my Nikon Z50 and the FTZ adapter and the 105 F2.8 Nikkor micro, they call it macro, most people call it, lens and uh, made some photographs. I used my um, product photography studio box, which I made a video about how I made it. I'll put a link to it up here. Uh, and usually I use a, a $5 Walmart LED light to, uh, to be the light source in my product photography studio box. But the rhinoceros beetle was moving just ever so slightly. And in order for that low power light to work with a high f-stop, I have to use, and, and to keep my shutter speed, I mean my ISO low, I have to use a pretty long shutter speed and the beetle would move, you know, on a one second exposure it would move just a tiny bit and ruin everything. So I had to come up with a whole different lighting idea. So I took the Walmart light out of the top and I put uh, an SB700 flash with one of my Young Now, Young No, however you say it, uh, remote triggers on it in that spot. And then uh, my other SB700 flash, I, I stood back from the box and uh, and so I had light coming all around it in the box, plus some front light as well. And I made several photos of it with the Z50 and the 105 2.8 macro lens. So I found to get most of the bug in focus, I needed about f22. And for some of the photos, I went all the way up to, or all the way down, I should say, to f32. And that's why uh, the shutter speed needed to be so long with the limited light from the Walmart LED lamp. But with the flashes, I could go all the way up to 1 200th. And I, I experimented around uh, with the flashes and it turned out that right about 50% power was the right amount on the flashes and uh, ISO 100 somewhere between F22 and F32 and 1 200th of a second was the settings for most of these photos. Okay, so this is an example of the setup. I've got my product photography studio, which you can see about in the other video that I linked to. Here's the SB700 and a Young No receiver trigger in the hole in the top. Here's the Young No transmitter. And I have another SB700 with a receiver trigger on it. Get the bug if it settles down and doesn't flip over which Heather just learned that bugs slipped over on their back when they're dying. So that's probably what's going on with this poor thing, but I'm glad to be able to photograph him and get everything lined up. Two second timer, hold the flash right here and boom. So that's how these shots were made. Okay, so here's the first shot. I only shared three of the shots I made. Some of the rest of them, the beetle was kind of leaning or didn't have it positioned just right. But here's the first shot of the rhino beetle and you can see that this one was at f22 and one two hundredth of a second there in the product photography studio it's neat to see all its little fur that sticks out here and there around its shell and then here's another one this one was facing the other direction and uh it's just such an attractive beetle i'm glad that when it fell down nobody stepped on it and it was really thoughtful of my buddy to uh, put it in the coffee cup and bring it to me i don't think i would have captured it but if it was about to die, I sure didn't mind making photographs of it. And I really like this picture. It's probably my favorite one. That's why I put it last. I'm holding the bug and kind of getting it positioned. 
and there you can see the settings and it shows you how big the bug is there in my fat fingers as I was getting it set up for another shot in the studio. Well, I hope you enjoyed those photographs. I hope they weren't too freaky for you. I think it's really fascinating and one of my favorite things about photography is doing things like uh, seeing a bird or, or a bug or something larger than life uh, kind of right in your face so you can see the details of it that maybe you couldn't see in a normal situation. So putting an awesome rhinoceros beetle in a product photography studio instead of a wristwatch or a diamond ring or some sort of thing like that that's, that you can see easily in real life uh, seeing a rhinoceros beetle up close like this may be something that you've never done. I know it's something I've never done. So I thought this was really fun and I hope you liked it. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see some more content like this and just all sorts of photography content, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.